folks, welcome back. <sighs> Big shout out to the people who used to be in 13th Air Force. You know who you are. All right, today, fun, fun, fun. I'm gonna continue to kick that stupid ammo can all over the place. Uh, what we have here is the uh, PV Patriot. Uh, this was the guitar I got at a thrift shop for probably about seven bucks uh, is what it ended up costing me. Um, and as you can see, it has a digital four color camouflage. There's the light um, tan color, the uh, dark green color, a light gray color, and a dark gray uh, color. Now this has had, um, well first of all this is uh, not the paint I would have wanted to use but this is what was available to me in Japan uh, at the time. This is a um, your standard matte camouflage kind of an alkaloid enamel uh, kind of paint. That's what there was. Um, it ha it cured for um, 45 or 60 days um, because it was actually in transit from the move. Uh, and then it uh, got 13 coats of Valspar um, acrylic lacquer. And when I say coat, uh, that's uh, as defined by the rule of threes, which meant I would dust a coat on, a spray or a pass, let's use the word pass. I would pass and then I would wait um, 15 minutes or so, pass it again going a different direction, 15 more minutes, pass it again, uh, and then I would wait three hours do that again, wait three hours, do it again, three coats a day maximum. So a coat is made up of three passes. So this has got 13 coats or 36 passes on it. I don't think it's going to be enough. The problem is the paint went on really thick, uh, partly because didn't know what I was doing. Um, so what I'm having to do is build up the clear um, in the low spots, hopefully to the point where it will meet um, the high spots, uh, but I don't think we're quite there yet. So we're going to wet sand it, um, and if we're not where we need to be, then we will start the process again. Um, it's time consuming because every time I'm done putting clear coat on, um, it sits for a month. Uh, to cure and to harden. Um, so the first thing we're going to start with, uh, I have soaked my uh, wet sanding paper overnight in water to get it uh, nice and wet. I use the wet dry sandpaper. Um, this just happens to be Noritake sandpaper just because that's what they sell in Japan. How crazy is that? Uh, I'm using a sanding block. You can get these at, at automotive supply stores. Uh, they call it a rubber squeegee for me. It's a sanding block. And um, this is my soak water. Um, this is my rinse water and I will change this in between grits of sandpaper. Um, and you just kind of wet the surface here and what you're looking to do if I rotate this you see that kind of a shine on it especially up there that shine I want to get rid of I want it to be flat because um, flat means that it's going to be um, not reflective means it's it's going to be flat. Um, 
So you're just trying to polish the shine off of it here. Uh, the reason we use the water on it is to carry away our sanding, um, the stuff that we're sanding off of it, and if we get any of our abrasive to come off of the sandpaper, we're uh, wiping that off too. not exactly the most exciting thing in the world to watch I can assure you um, I'm starting off with starting off with 600 grit paper 600 800 a thousand 1500 to 2000 um, that's the course that we will do Yeah, this is it for the foreseeable future. Um, and I'm going to be here a while. So uh, grab a beverage or two or three, have some bacon. Um, Put some tunes on. I know I will. Uh, unfortunately, the YouTubes gets all angry and such uh, when you put music on. Um, but I will tell you that uh, I listen to Pandora Radio. Um, I have a boatload of stations. Um, and I think today is going to be... I think today's going to be a white snake day. I really do. Um, so stand by and uh, watch the fun. That could only be wet sanding. Hey, welcome back. Um, I've quickly gone from the uh, 600 back down to the 400 because um, I think the 600 was just going to take too long and I'm going to show you the issue that I'm running into which I knew was going to happen if you will look you can see that line the top of it is not reflecting anymore which means that that is sanded almost level I've gotten all the little peaks and valleys out of this. This is a very, very orange peely textured kind of coat. That's just that color. You'll notice the shiny part is the part underneath it. Is a, the next color down uh, has barely been touched uh, by the sanding process. And then the next color down from that has not been touched at all. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be something else. Um, always learning. Stand by. More to come. All right, well, um, we've mostly finished the back. What I'm doing is, um, you know, I was kind of at the beginning trying to get everything down to the base color um, flat. Um, uh, I've realized that what I need to do is this I need to take the peaks off the top part of it. So what I'm doing now is I'm going through and I am sanding the top layer. Um, the stuff that starts to flat first and getting that and leaving this stuff in the base the very bottom levels, leaving that because what I'm going to have to do is now uh, I've moved these levels from here to here. So once I get this all done, then it's back to the clear coating process, another 10, 12, 14 coats. Then flat sand again going from here to here. 
Um, hopefully, a second round will take care of it. If we have to do a third round, we have to do a third round. I mean, uh, uh, it is what it is. Um, so that's where we're at. The the back side and the uh, the cutout here is uh, pretty much done, and. Uh, we will start on this uh, after I run some errands. Um, we'll start on this about lunchtime or so. Uh, this side I've only got, oh, I don't know, an hour into. Um, and then we'll, uh, then we'll start on the front side, then we'll start on the sides. Uh, and then I'll let it dry for a couple, three days. And then we'll start the clear coat process all over again. So, tune back in. Hey, we're back after lunch. I got a new sanding pad. Woo! Uh, this is the 3M Stick It Foam Sanding Pad. It's supposed to grip the paper a little bit better. We'll see. Um, back for lunch. Uh, sanding the tops down. Just to get start working on getting things leveled out. Uh, it's not exciting stuff. Um, but, it keeps me off the streets, mostly. Keeps me out of trouble, mostly. Um, so we will continue on. can see, well, let's hope you can see. Let's do the little zoomy zoom zoom here. Right there. I just scored the top of that off. You just sand until you don't need to sand anymore. Did you like? Here, let's see. Can I put that in your way a little bit more? Here, we'll put this in the way. Maybe this. We'll put this in the way too. Okay. We'll put that in the way as well. Maybe that'll help. How's that? There we go. Uh, here we are. I have no skin left on the end of my fingers. Um, I think this is pretty good. Uh, again, I've used 400 uh, grit uh, wet and dry sandpaper. And what I have attempted to do is to knock down the tallest part of the paint um, to make the difference between the bottom layer of paint and the top layer of paint 
uh, a little bit less. Um, so now, uh, unfortunately, I think we're going to have to wait um, because it sounds like the weather is going to come in and uh, play havoc with the humidity and I'm not going to clear coat um, just so that I can look at it and go, oh look, crappy clear coat. Uh, so I think there's going to be a little bit of a pause, but uh, as soon as that's over with, uh, I assure you we will, uh, I'll get this done, uh, coated. I don't know, maybe, maybe six coats, and then we'll let it dry, and then we'll come back and we'll sand it down again. Uh, right now it's, it's visibly less noticeable than it was, just the texture on top of it. Um, so hopefully with that, those additional coats, um, that will make it even less so. Uh, and then if it's still there, um, we'll sand it all down and we'll do it all over again. Because um, uh, that's how you learn, is by doing stuff the right way. So, uh, check back. Later. Jameson loves you. Bye-bye.